you think about the kind of events that are going on around the world, corporate media tends to turn it on its head with the real news that was sort of interesting. It's actually turned things back on its feet so that you can actually understand the reason for certain types of events. Forty-eight years ago, right here at the heart of Greensboro, North Carolina, four hungry black students, they came to the diner inside Woolworths. They sat down and they refused to leave until their meals were served. The next day there were 28 people. Then a few days later there were 300 people. Within two months, across nine states, there were 15 sit-ins going on. The American Civil Rights Movement was born. That was a long way from blacks being lynched, segregated, and being in extreme danger because they wanted to vote. One of those four students, his name was Franklin McCain, no relation. It's impossible to understand what's going on in North Carolina in 2008 without coming here. Woolworths now is being converted into an international civil rights museum. North Carolina has not voted Democratic since 1976, although it has more registered Democrats than registered Republicans. Until a few weeks ago, before the Wall Street meltdown, this was an even more unlikely swing state than Virginia. Now, only a few yards away from Woolworths, this is what's happening. I'm a product of the civil rights uh, era. I attended school here and back during the 60s. Um, I participated in uh, uh, the civil rights movement. Everyone's hurting now, even those individuals who've never experienced that. Uh, feeling the impact of the negative uh, negativity that this administration um, has brought to the forefront. So I think that that is probably what has promoted um, so much of, uh, of an impact, positive impact, for Senator Obama here in the Carolinas. This is uh, a very historical event one that perhaps I never even thought that I would see in my lifetime. Yes, this is a second silent American revolution. A new, new South, 16 years after Bill Clinton, is now entering American politics. Charlotte is the face of the new, new South. It's the corporate headquarters of Bank of America, right behind me, and Wachovia as well, on the other end of Tryon Street soon to be gobbled up by Wells Fargo. Forget about rednecks and pickup trucks, Bible Belt and Joe the Plumber. This is the biggest banking center in the US outside of New York City. But then Charlotte the Boomtown, attracting waves and waves of highly educated professionals, just as the research triangle of Raleigh and Durham was hit by the financial crisis. Wachovia employs 20,000 people in Charlotte alone. The layoffs in the local economy started as early as six months ago. The financial crisis may be leading a lot of people here to fall off the tracks. In Charlotte, this means East and West Boulevards divided by South Boulevard. On one side, we have gleaming postmodern financial services America, even in crisis. On the other side, we have real America, suffering America. But there's also an interesting twist. These tracks here, they are for a very modern trolley. Cheap collective transportation, a no-brainer that in countless American cities would dramatically reduce U.S. dependence on foreign oil. 12% of North Carolina's population is poor, earning less than $50,000 a year. Many among these are blacks, poor or middle class. What has changed is that most are now flocking to the polls. Everybody's hurting across party lines. Republicans are hurting, Democrats are hurting, blacks are hurting, whites are hurting, everybody's hurting. We want change. We have to find a solution to the war. We have to find a solution to the vast gap in the economy. You got people who are barely making it, and then you got people who are over making it. We need a balance. Change health care and uh, giving back tax programs to the needy people as far as the people making $250,000 above a year, the people not putting that in programs that's gonna help the needy people. In North Carolina, blacks have been a very impressive 31% of early voters so far. They make up 21% of the state's population. In 2004, they made up only 19% of the state's vote. 
Democrats are outvoting Republicans by 2.5 to 1 in North Carolina. That's double the margin from 2004. Bush won North Carolina by 12 four years ago. But that's the past. Here, Obama has outspent McCain 8 to 1. His campaign did redraw the electoral map, creating tremendous excitement among blacks, college students, the female vote, independents, exurban, and suburban. Everybody's excited about Obama, you know. My psalm is, you know, is for McCain, and, and uh, but as it's, the way it is here, it's almost like everywhere, the same way everywhere, you know. Blacks are excited, and a lot of whites are excited. I mean, because they want somebody true and right, you know, and it's been the way it is for a long time. Among male voters, Obama holds even with McCain. That explains why he's up by one percentage point, according to Real Clear Politics. Both Obama and McCain have been to North Carolina seven times each since the start of the campaign on September 5th. The McCain campaign, even in its worst nightmares, would never have dreamed that they would be fighting for their lives here in North Carolina in October. McCain is desperately moving all his chips to Virginia. That's a long shot. Obama is up by a steady seven in Virginia, thanks largely to the north and suburbs close to Washington. And McCain is also attacking Florida, where Obama is up by 2.2, according to Real Clear Politics. The social conservative revolution was born here in Dixie. Well, bye-bye, Jesse Helms. Biblical language nowadays is directed more towards Wall Street than towards homosexuals. White North Carolinians are even considering casting their vote for a liberal black senator from Chicago. This election is about voters' social class, about age, about geography, and yes, about race. The time seems to be exactly right for a blue Dixie led by a black man. Now that's a new New South, something that Franklin McCain, 48 years ago in Greensboro, could only dream about. Just an old sweet gospel song to keep Jesus on my mind. Master, Donate today and receive a new documentary film available to members of the Real News Network. The History of the National Security State with legendary author Gore Vidal. Bonus features of the DVD include an in-depth response to Vidal from ex-CIA analyst Ray McGovern, who served under seven U.S. presidents, an exclusive interview with Colin Powell's former chief of staff Larry Wilkerson, and an insightful interview with oil policy analyst Antonia Juhas. <laughs> News magazine of the screen. Living glimpses of history in the making. Hollywood and Washington, there's a symbiotic relationship. They both deal with illusions. Reality doesn't often uh, play much of a part. I think I saw through the myth of the uh, Cold War almost from the beginning. I was a Washington political kid from a political family. Roosevelt first had radio because he had a, this great speaking voice and everyone liked to hear. Truman proceeded to break every arrangement that Roosevelt had set up for a peaceful coexistence. And Truman thought that it would be a good idea. Why not just stay armed all the time? And then he devised the national security state. You've got to go up and swear allegiance to the United States or else you're a commie. I mean, we, were, we had imported fascism. We get Dwight Eisenhower, who said that we have this great military industrial complex. It is a dangerous thing. And he said, this is going to change everything. And the way our country's governed, it's going to change us politically. Along comes Jack Kennedy, who wanted to make his mark, believed in the Cold War. But he said, in this kind of politics, it is the appearance of things that matters. I think everybody should take a sober look at the world about us. 
the national security state still exists. Only it isn't communism anymore, it's terrorism. This is the most serious thing that has happened in the history of the United States. Knowledge is power. We need an honest new system. We need the real news. This is the sort of thing we can build right now without anyone else's permission from the government or from the business community. It's the powers in our hands. If we're not going to sleepwalk into more wars, we think we need to start with a television news network that won't bow to pressure and has the courage to seek facts. And that means independent economics. And that's why we need you. Make a tax-deductible donation now of at least $10 a month or a one-time give of at least $75. As a thank you for your support, we will send you the new documentary film, The History of the National Security State.